Welcome to the Biobalance HealthCast, episode number 384. Balancing the most common side effect of testosterone replacement, facial hair, with the success of the symptom relief that you get with testosterone replacement. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. So my wife has been on testosterone replacement and estrogen replacement for years. And one of the side effects that we all know comes with that is uh, occasionally you get some facial hair. And she gets hysterical at times when we're driving down the highway. And it seems like whenever we're in the car, that's the best light. It's, it is the best light. And, and, the and best then she's you know, looking in the mirror. It's like a magnifying And mirror. she's like, why didn't you tell me? I, you know, and she has a facial hair that she then gets her little tweezers out and she plucks. <laughs> and she'll kill me for saying all this if she happens to watch this episode. <laughs> but that's not uncommon. And we talk to you about mm-hmm. it. And you're like, yeah, a lot, a number of women, not mm-hmm. necessarily a lot, but a number of women have that as, as a side effect. And some of them get so distraught about that side effect that they are willing to forego all of the symptom relief that they've obtained for, for the reasons that brought them to your office mm-hmm. in the first place. They're willing to say, you know, I'll take the risk of having that come back mm-hmm. rather than having facial hair. Which I, I find amazing and it's hard for me to go. It's, for me, I've had facial hair my whole life. I mean, I'm Italian. I had facial hair, I had lots of arm hair, I had, you know, stuff that I had to deal with early on, like at 12 and the rest of my life, but when my ovaries were removed, no more facial hair and no more arm hair. In fact, all the hair, my head hair fell out and I mean, basically I didn't have as much hair as I'd ever had before puberty. So it was, it's not an unusual thing for me, so I just kind of go... Well, it's back, so now I'm going to wax it, or I'm going to use an epilator. So, the, but to there get are things to do. You don't right. overreact to it. No, and and I I don't understand overreacting to it because there's so many ways you can get rid of it, but there's something else about facial hair that is emotional. That absolutely, isn't, it isn't logical because if you go, well, well it's it's you, anti-feminine. Right, but if you say I've got a libido back, my husband's happy, I've got and I'm happy and I've got orgasms again and my I'm losing under I'm losing weight yeah. and and uh, my muscles are coming back and I can exercise again and I have energy and then you go, but I've got some facial hair. I'm not going to do this anymore. Well, and that often, doesn't make any sense to me. Often it's white. I mean, it's clear. No, it's it's blonde. White, clear, I mean, blonde, blonde yeah. but but. People, it's I mean, hard I don't, to see is my point. Right, and and they see it. I can't see it across the desk. If I can't see it across my little de- yeah. my little table in my office, then it probably isn't seen by many people. So, but it's different for them. It's it's hard for women who have never had facial hair to have facial hair. And and granted, when we replace testosterone, we're not as good as God was about this. I mean, some people never had facial hair because it was balanced better, but I, but we fix all their problems. So, so, so I grew up in the country 70 years ago <laughs> in a very rural part of Arkansas. Mm-hmm. Um, we had a circus that came to town periodically. Don't, don't do that. This is nothing like that. No, this it's is not. Like That's my teeny, point though. But tiny little hairs or, or, you know, I mean, it is not like the bearded lady. Okay. So I didn't do it. You did it. That was, that had to do with somebody who has. A tumor, or that makes testosterone yes. out in an outrageous level. Yes, Doctor Mumpin, I am aware. Yes, but yes, my counselor. P- my point was that women have grown up with those cultural myths, mm-hmm. and the the myth of the bearded lady. Mm-hmm. It's a statement that it's not feminine, it's not ladylike, mm-hmm. it's not attractive, mm-hmm. and if they discover that they suddenly have this issue, which they think is an issue because they see it and they mm-hmm. go, "Oh my God." Someone looking at them may not see it at all. Right. But but they panic about it. I know. And then they say, well, this is so outrageous and so difficult for me to carry that I will give up these other benefits in order not to have this. 
So, so it's my job to bring it into a logical light. So I had, I had a patient last week. Susan came in and I had reviewed everything. Right. I looked and at you her. Always I, before she came in for her follow-up visit, it was three and a half months after her pellets, and I compared her lab to beforehand and looked down the lab. It was all perfect. Mm-hmm. Her estrogen had come back, come in. She had had she, menopausal symptoms. They shouldn't be there because her estrogen was now normal range for um, premenopause, and her testosterone was normal range for our pellets, where we know that they're effective. And everything else had evened out. We'd given her thyroid. Everything was great. So in terms of just lab, I was ecstatically happy. So when she came in, she was kind of not happy. And I said, how are you feeling? This is great. And she just looked at me and she goes, I have facial hair. I said, so so how are your symptoms? Let me just back up for a second. We'll talk about the facial hair, but let me ask you, did this do any good? Redirect. Redirect so that she yeah. would think logically. To, I'm trying to get her logical side of her brain in. So I went through every one of her symptoms, and they were all better. Mm-hmm. So we give every single patient a prescription for spironolactone. That is a... It's it's off label. It's supposed to be a diuretic. It doesn't do diuresis very well, but it's great for women to not have facial hair. It suppresses okay. suppresses that the facial hair not at, hair at on the, the rest of their body, just no, on their face. just on their face, okay. and it makes the head on their hair thicker and their head thicker. Yeah. So hair on their head thicker. So um, so I said, so did you take the spironolactone? Because she did. She wasn't. She wasn't Greek. She wasn't Italian. She didn't have. She wasn't dark. You know. She had lightish hair, and the hair I think she was talking about because I couldn't see it was blonde, but she didn't like it. Um, I said, "Did you take the spironolactone so that you wouldn't have facial hair?" No, I don't want to take it. I said, "Well, that's what I gave you, mm-hmm. so that you could enjoy all the benefits of testosterone and not have the one side effect that testosterone can cause." Yeah, and so then you said, "Well, why, why didn't you take it?" Uh, because we talked about it. I told you this was for this issue, and mm-hmm. if you took this, you wouldn't have this issue. And she said, and she said, I don't like to take pills, but she's taking a which whole is an bunch incredibly of- rational position. I know. To take. Yeah. Okay. I know. And then part of the reason people want pellets is because they don't want to take pills. Pellets are more natural. They're more like your ovary there. Yeah. So that makes sense. And I, I run into that periodically, but they take supplements, yeah. handful of supplements every day. That's pills. Right. So it's a cheap medication. It does very little except maybe get a, remove some swelling. So I, except for people who are under 100 pounds, I recommend it for everybody because right. under 100 pounds, it does affect their, their blood volume, so they may get low blood pressure. But this, was, this wasn't logical for me, so I switched her into the logical mode, and I said, so you have all of these benefits. Your marriage is better. Your husband's happy. You're having sex more. You're enjoying it. You're sleeping better, and you're going to trade all of that for something that can be easily taken care of. It was actually of. a fast line, but it's an important thing. You're having sex more that you enjoy. Right. So that's a, most people perceive that as a benefit. They may have gone through performa routines that were painful or uncomfortable. They or they didn't have, really want because they, they didn't, didn't have the really desire. Want. Exactly. Uh, we're accommodating, but everybody knows an accommodation is not really an enjoyable or satisfactory experience. Right. So this benefit allows them to have sex in a way that they enjoy, they and their partner mm-hmm. enjoy, which really strengthens the, the relational bond. Uh, it makes it much better. Mm-hmm. So are you willing to put that back in the closet because you now have one or two facial hairs? And it's not like a beard. It, it doesn't present at like mine looks. It's one or two <laughs> facial hairs that they can deal with in, if well, they in don't take people, the medicine. Well, some people, it's one or two facial hairs. In me, if I didn't take the spironolactone, uh-huh. it would be a fuzzy lip mm-hmm. that was either slightly, I mean, it used to, when I was young, it was dark, but it would be a, kind of a, a whitish, almost gray look, shadow, 
So, so for those of us who are Southern European, it looks like that. So like the scene in the, uh, my big fat Greek wedding, where they're all sitting around before the wedding mm -hmm. with something. It's on either their... depilatory where they're going to wipe the, uh -huh. wipe the hair off, or it's a bleach where they're bleaching it blonde because blonde hair, you can't see. Hmm. So yeah, it's my fat, <laughs> my big fat Greek wedding. I mean, I love Run, that because, too. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love that scene because it looks just like my family. Yeah. You know, so, <laughs> so it's, it's, it's kind of like, oh, I'm at home. Okay. So I used to do that. That's, but I didn't take the, I didn't have a way of removing the hair because I didn't, when I was young, I didn't go to get waxed or I didn't understand all the things you could do, but you can. So there is hope for this. You can pluck just one or two hairs. If you see them, you can laser them if they're dark and they won't come back. You, you can. So you have a laser that'll kill that hair and it won't come back at all. If it's but dark only hair. if it's dark. Right. We can't. We don't. The no laser one won't has see the white hair. Right. No okay. one has a laser that does white hair yet. Yeah. So, um, so if you have white hair, then you have to be waxed, or if you want to be in control, because a lot of us are control freaks, you can use one of these guys, which is it. It's like tweezers, only a hundred tweezers that run like that, and it plucks large amounts of hair out at once it hurts well but you wouldn't use that if you only had one or two no you would use this if you had if you were like me and you had a bunch of you know if i didn't take spironolactone i'd have a whole bunch of kind of light facial hair that i didn't like okay so i could see it maybe no one else could see it right so this would do the job or, or if they see it it's they just see like it plucking just only in plucking the right light right where it's like just a fuzzy little film almost mm -hmm. but i mean like Peach in, fuzz. in our I mean, we do dermaplaning, which actually basically does a exfoliation of the top cells of, of your skin, but it also takes out the hair follicles. And how do you do, what's the That's That's technique? an esthetician will do that. It's uh -huh. kind of like, it's using a sharp edge to just kind of go across, take off the top layer of skin and the hair follicles. Is that like shaving? No, it doesn't come back. With a, a, with stubble. a stubble. So okay. I advise my patients never to use a, sh a razor on their face. Right. Because then they'll have stubble forever. And no one wants to feel stubble if they touch your face. That's, to me, that's the worst part about having facial hair. And you don't get stubble unless you shave. Yeah. And so I know that there's a lot of, um, I took my daughter, she was modeling when she was a teenager. And she went to this amazing photographer and this photographer is like well you need to shave between your eyebrows and shave the, and and i'm like oh no you don't right we are not doing this i don't care who you are yeah <laughs> no one in my house no female shaving her face so i just plucked out a couple of the hair she was talking about yeah that was nothing mm -hmm. and we went on but i just couldn't believe that she would recommend that for any woman when she's right. into fashion and beauty but she did it's a fast way of getting it done i just didn't think it was that right. it was helpful for a young woman to to believe that right so the ways this is something that's doable it's also something that's not just going to happen if you have testosterone right because there's another reason if you, if you think about it, all the little old ladies that you see, if you go to a nursing home, there's like, they've got black hair sticking out. I mean, my grandma, grandma had two or three of them. I'd be like, Grandma, can you see those? No, could you get them for me? You know, I'd pluck her face. Yeah. She wasn't on testosterone. Right. She wasn't on estrogen. She had the adrenal gland was then making a lot of what we call male hormone, but it's it's an androgen, but it's not testosterone. Didn't give her any of the good stuff testosterone does, but gave her facial hair. Hmm. So she had all of these things. And you see them when you go to Italy. There's, If you see pe people over 50, they've got lots of facial hair kind of growing in, but they're not on testosterone. That's just their adrenal gland taking over for their ovaries. So, so, so they can use the same thing. It's possible that women who are not on the hormone replacement will have this, a similar issue. Right. But for a different reason. For a different, different reason. Yeah. So it's not always us. Yeah. But but that's why we prophylactically use spironolactone so that no one has this emotional problem with hair. And I, I get that, kind of. If I'd never had it, I guess it would be much more disturbing. But they still they get emotional when, when they aren't on testosterone and get that. So what is the medical definition of a prophylactic treatment? What is that? Is that a preventative, That means you protective? prevent it. Okay. So by giving 
patients uh, spironolactone to take every day with their vitamins. That would be a prophylactic treatment. That would treatment. be a prophylactic treatment or a preventive treatment so they didn't get facial hair with testosterone therapy. Right. So it works at the follicle level. It doesn't decrease. It's not like you're giving somebody testosterone and then decreasing the level. So the relevance of this conversation is tied to the consistent message that you try to give all the time, which is that a woman should be actively involved in her medical decisions and should operate from a position of information. Right. And if she has the information, which literally, in, in the old days when I was in sales, we used to have a thing called the Ben Franklin close. And they always taught <laughs> that you can never be a salesman if you don't close, if you don't ask for the question. Mm -hmm. And the Ben Franklin close is when you take a sheet of paper and divide it in half and put all the pros on one side. Why should I buy this product? And all mm -hmm. the cons on the mm -hmm. other side. Why should I not buy mm -hmm. this product? And the salesman is then trained to help you stack the deck. Uh -huh. uh, but a lot of people find that to be a useful way to make decisions. Mm -hmm. And if you sit down and look at all the reasons why I should consider having hormone replacement therapy, because I, I don't, I, I have painful sex or I don't have libido, I'm not lubricated, uh, I can't don't sleep at night, I'm becoming uh, osteoporotic. I, I mean, just all the things that we and you know. you want to prevent heart disease, diabetes, and uh, and, and, and then and on the other side. I might get some. I might. I might get some facial hair, which is another treatable, Prevent, preventable, treatable. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so don't just say, "Oh my God," and run away. It's it's not a good decision. And 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 one more thing about making those columns. Yeah. By by making the columns yourself, pro and con, you you change the side of your brain from your emotional side to your to your logical side, which is where it should be to make a decision. That's why I always ask my patients all the symptoms before I then deal with the emotional question. Yeah. Because then I flip them into the reasonable part of their brain. And, and it, that makes sense because you want to make a reasonable, logical decision about your health care. You don't want to go, oh, I'm so afraid, just like People are still afraid of estrogen. Right. They think it causes breast cancer. Well, it some doesn't. doctors still are. And a lot of doctors still say that, yeah. even though the research right. has come out and said it doesn't. Right. So, and same with testosterone and prostate cancer. It doesn't cause it. Right. So, and, and lot, more and more urologists, though, are sent, having, sending people to me, and they say to the patient, go get some testosterone. It's not the high testosterone that causes prostate cancer. It's the low testosterone. So they're sending men to you. Yes. Yeah. So oftentimes we get it, you know, if we keep up with, with, our tra with our practice. Yes. But we don't want you to be afraid and make a decision based on fear. And that's why we wanted to present this issue because we do hear about it a lot. Yeah. And we want you to decrease your anxiety so that you're not in a fearful state to make a decision. As always, thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BioBalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash BioBalanceHealth. Find Brett Newcomb at BrettNewcomb.com.